Oh, you mean call yourself Jehovah's Witnesses and refuse to fight the enemy? The Lord said, thou shalt not kill. What about drinking? Is that a big sin? According to God's law, it's wrong. What kind of man are you if you don't drink? Soldier Jim Slade, since you refuse to bear arms against the enemy when our country is in a state of war, according to Articles 142 and 143 of the Military Penal Code, you're hereby sentenced to two and a half years of hard labor. Sentence to begin at once.
I'm telling you the truth. Ain't got no use for shovels around here. Nobody'd buy them. That's right. I could sell one to the gravedigger, but he's the only one got any use for a shovel. You see, there's no market. Sorry. You there, stranger, did you find something you want? I've got everything here, and I'm the barber and the dentist. Uh, I want a gun. A gun? What type would you like? Just a gun. When you go looking for a gun, it's best to know what you want. They're Colts, Smith & Wessons, Derringers. Saying you want to buy a gun is much the same as buying an animal, but what kind? A cat? A small dog? Any kind, mister. Ah, oh, well, when you put it that way... Here you are, mister. I recommend this without reservation. A Colt, caliber 45. It's a model that's very popular and doesn't cost too much. And if you're fast enough, it'll fire all six bullets in just four seconds. But why didn't you come before? You know you can always count on me. I know. But I had to be alone, Cassidy. My, my whole world collapsed and I, I needed time to think. Time to decide. I had to decide. Well, don't stand there like a board. Sit down and have a bite with me. Listen, son, what's on your mind? You decided? Yeah, I decided. You gotta... You gotta teach me how to use it. Don't ask me to do a thing like that, Jim. You know, our faith doesn't allow killing. You must. Well, they killed both my parents. I want my revenge. You can't refuse. You wanna be like this? Crippled for life, huh? Please think, Jim. You start to kill people, You'll get a bullet like me. How many were there? There were four. Well, it looks to me like your mind's all set. And you can't even pull a trigger. There are four killers. And you never handled a gun. This bullet is enough to put you in a wheelchair. Just tell me the names. Okay. I recognized only three of them. The Butcher Brothers and... Jeff Mortimer Logan, 43 years old, guilty of theft, rape, violence, malicious incitement to riot, arson, raiding, armed robbery, and wanted by the authorities of the state of Arizona. In and out of prison for every kind of petty larceny. You are hereby sentenced for these crimes to receive the maximum penalty. Furthermore, in view of the fact that you have confessed your implication in these heinous crimes, the decision of the court is to proceed immediately to carry out the penalty according to the laws of this state. The maximum penalty is death by hanging. I, Judge Jefferson, with the powers invested in me by the federal government, do now hereby declare that this county court has reached a just and fair verdict. And we will proceed at once with the execution of the sentence. Thanks for saving my life, friend. If it weren't for you, I'd be six feet under by now, that's for sure. You came right in the nick of time. I'd just about given up all hope. Hey.
Hey, by the way, what's your handle? I don't recall meeting you. I don't know you. True, but you knew my father. Perry Slade. Remember Tucson, Arizona? Pick it up. And stop digging. What are you planning to do with me? Bury you like a Christian. Come on. Come on, move, dig. I didn't want to do it. All I wanted was the money. It was the others. There was four of you. Yeah, but I didn't kill anyone. It was the others, the Butcher Brothers. Now, who was it for? A guy from Texas. His name's Corbett. I swear to you, I didn't kill anyone. Like hell you didn't. You said Corbett? Yeah. Senor, you're sure that he is the man you want? What's a man called? Butcher. Tony Butcher. He's a good husband to me. Please, it's his brother. No, I'm sorry. Listen to me. Anyone here know Freddy Butcher? I want to talk to him. How's he, Cards? I'm Freddy Butcher. Something I can do for you? I thought you should know your brother's dead. I, uh, killed him. Two hours ago. You want to get yourself killed for nothing? My brother isn't the type to get himself killed by the likes of you. Who are you? I don't think I've had the pleasure of meeting you before. Jim Slade's the name. That should ring a bell.
Nothing on Corbett, but I recall the name. Maybe if you try in another county, you might have better luck there. Another county? Another hundred if it's necessary. I hope you find what you're looking for. Howdy. What town is this? Galveston, amigo. Terrigio, Texas. See you around. Stranger, a real blinded son in these here parts. Who are you burying? Yeah, no one's being buried yet. Of course, Day's still young. My grandpappy always said, always be prepared, and that's my motto. Well, let's have a look at you, Sonny. Now, you don't seem the type to wind up in one of my boxes. You look too sort of sensible, you know. Yeah, I can spot them pretty quick by now. The ones who are going on the long ride. <laughs> oh, are you going to offer a drink to old Dan? That's me. <laughs> a spot of whiskey. <laughs> whiskey? Nah. <laughs> Water. <laughs> a glass of whiskey and a glass of water. <laughs> Easy there, Ben. Any more strangers come through and you'll be boozed to the eyeballs. Tell you, it's mighty surprising to me as mayor to see two strangers come through in one day. Yeah, it sure is. Mr. Uh... My name is Douglas. I try to spread the word of God. I'm not a preacher, but I do the best I can. I hope this town will be an easy one, though I'm afraid it's too quiet. Even the bar doesn't seem to do much business. Is that right, mister? I don't drink alcohol. My faith forbids it. I belong to the order of, of Jehovah's Witnesses. Stay here. I'm going to go outside and take a look around. There's too much action going on here today, and it worries me. <laughs> Howdy, strangers. Welcome to Galveston. Better just shut your mouth and get inside. Go on. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, hands up, everybody. This is a hold up. Nobody move. Just a moment. What's the meaning of this? Get over there, you. Move. Here, you take this money for now, Slim. All right, where is it? There's more cash than this in Galveston. How much did you get? 
Just this lousy $720 here. Hmm. It's chicken feed. You keep it. I want that $200,000 that was transferred here from Dodge City the other day, mister. What did you do with that bundle of money, huh? Ah, what a pestle of a town. Even the whiskey stinks. Am I right, hombre? Hey, am I right or not? I wouldn't know. I, I don't drink whiskey. You don't drink whiskey? Ah, madre de Dios. Do you hear that, hombres? In this bar, they only drink water. <laughs> hey, let me have some water. Water is pretty good for washing, but if you use it too often, then... <laughs> it is bad for the skin. <laughs> Mister, tell me where that two hundred thousand dollars is. But I told you, it's not here. It was supposed to arrive yesterday, but the shipment was delayed. Ask anybody in town, they'll, they'll tell you the truth. Would the bank be this empty if the money was here, would it? Seven hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> we went to all that trouble for seven hundred and twenty dollars. <laughs> Here, join me in a drink, amigo. Come on, just a quick one. <laughs> Come on, amigo. Don't make me angry! The Lord said unto Isaac, do not provoke. Unless ye be provoked. That's what the Lord said. You idiots. We're here to hold up a bank, not to play around the saloon. Go on. And you just stay here nice and quiet. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Amen. certainly the best solution. Gentlemen, it was my good fortune to be present a few minutes ago when you amply demonstrated your cooperation and your patience. More to the point, your ability to handle a pistol. Yes, men, you may well be the answer to our prayers. As mayor of this town, I stand ready to talk a deal with you. I'm offering $5,000. I mean $5,000 to each of you if you stay here and help defend the town against this dirty gang of killers. That's kind of tempting, I admit, but I'm afraid you're mistaken there. You see, my work isn't killing people for money. It's more like saving their souls. Besides, why should these bandits return? I'll be back. I only got away with $700. A bank robbery for $700? They must have been after the Dodge City shipment. It's an enormous sum, and the bandits knew of it. You see, as it was, the bank was almost completely empty. It's that time of year when the farmers need cash to buy seed. Because of this, we had arranged a loan of $200,000 from our bank in Dodge City. But fortunately for us, the shipment was delayed there for two weeks. So that's what it's all about. Those bandits will be back. You can bet on it. They'll shoot up this whole town. They've got their informers, of course. And they're not going to leave us alone until they get their hands on that money. That's for sure. They even killed our sheriff. Look here, son. I'm not offering peanuts. Will you give it some thought, please? No, thanks. 
It's, uh, it's not the money. I've got other things to do. Sell your horse. And be quick. Hurry up, damn you. Haven't we already met? Maybe so. Hurry up. Sell that horse. You won't get very far like that. You ain't gonna stop me. You played the wrong card. Bastard! Pull the trigger and have done with it. Pleasant dreaming, Harris. <laughs> Any objections? Mm -mm. You shot one of my men this morning. Well, he provoked me. Yeah. Your sins will follow wherever you go, said Isaac to Jacob. And then came darkness over the land, and the Lord's punishment fell on the children of Israel. Terrible scourges and plagues followed one upon the other. Boils, famine, corruption, and lust, according to the prophecies of the wise men. I beg you to heed the warning in the pages of the Bible. Cleanse your souls of sin. Find humility. Hallelujah, brothers! Do you have a room? As many as you want. Everybody's left town. I guess we're in for a lot of trouble in the next few days. If you ask me, and you didn't, I'd say it's a pretty good reason to stay away from here, right? On the contrary, it's a good reason to be here. And I have a special appointment with someone. I'll stay. My key, please. With pleasure. Well, do you accept my offer? Yeah, all right. Well, is the bill ready? I can't wait to get out of this place. Where are you going? As far as I can get from this wretched hole if you let go of my arm. Well, uh, why don't you stick around? <laughs> why, everybody knows those bandits will be back, and I don't like singing to empty seats. $20. Well, how about singing for me? And the mayor? And the preacher over there? How'd you like that, Mr. Douglas? For such a public, it's hardly worth the bother. You want me to ship your bags on ahead? Yes, please. No. You can send her bags upstairs. She ain't going anywhere. Okay. But why? It's all got to be the same here. Everything normal-like. Normal for whom? For a certain Corbett. It's all got to look like it was, or he won't be back. It's an interesting game. It makes one think. If you're 
play alone? Nobody wants to think in this cussed place. You want to play? Are you asking if I know how to think? Any man who preaches the Bible is a thinking man. Mr. Douglas, you seem to be one of the few men around here who believe that a pistol doesn't resolve every problem. I guess you talked me into a game after all. Good. They're at it again, sir. It's that Chevelle. What the hell's happening? We got a lot of loonies here. Loonies? You see, we had a madhouse right here in Galveston up until a week ago when one of them set fire to the building. It certainly was a terrible thing. We had to put them up temporarily in the jailhouse. They need help. Yeah, but the trouble is, we can't move them because of Corbett. Uh -huh. Please, I know the agreement we made didn't include this, but in a way, well, you're acting as sheriff here. Yeah, come along now, Sonny. I'll go with you. If we don't hurry, by the time we get there, they'll have their throats slit. Sounds awful. Come on, let's go. Maybe I can give you a hand. Okay. Give me the key. Come on, be quiet. Now there, be good boys and don't quarrel. Do you hear, or there'll be no food tomorrow. And anyone who makes a fuss, he'll get tied up like Davis. You can't just keep them in a cell like that. They're mad, not criminals. They're also criminals. Nothing else we can do about it. The two hospital helpers perished in the fire. And, well, the county doctor comes to visit when he can. The fact is, in there, at least they can't hurt anyone. <laughs> the one who's laughing back there is a sex maniac called Barrett. Last year, he violated and killed his cousin, that one Chevelle. He hates Jackson, who has amnesia. The old man who's playing with the match, his name's O'Hara, a pyromaniac. Last year, he just set fire to his house and burnt his whole darn family, huh? You need a better solution to this situation. This is plain and human. It isn't that easy, I'm afraid. I say we go wait for Corbett. All right? <laughs> oh. How do you, Sheriff? I'm not the Sheriff. Any news of the money? Has it arrived? Because if it ain't arrived yet, there's no use waiting for Corbett. Are you the one who only drinks water? That's right. Well, someone offered me $200 to put you out of the way. Got anything to say to that? Sonny. Many thanks. Best shooting I've seen in many a day. And that's right, my boy. That was pretty good shooting. Mind if I try? It's 
not bad. But the hammer's a little stiff, and that makes it slow. Want to try? No. No, I don't think so. Thank you all the same. Listen to those madmen. It must have been the shooting that woke them up. Your fool brother was always shooting off his mouth, always saying how fast with a gun he was. So what happens? He's killed by an idiot who only drinks water. We held up the stage. It's not a penny anywhere. Are you sure? Sure as anything. If there'd have been any gold at all around, we'd have found it. It'll be coming. Don't worry, the cash has got to arrive. The bank can't function without money. This morning, we set our men on the hill surrounding the town. <laughs> no one gets into Galveston without our permission. It is not easy to hide that much money. And they got to pass this way to get to Galveston. Morning, Barber. How many teeth you pulled today? Not one, Jim. Ain't no more victims. Everyone's too broke. Bye now. Oh, oh, oh. Well, good morning to you, Sonny. Good morning. Where are you going with that new wagon? <laughs> Mighty pretty, isn't it? <laughs> the most stylish of all my wagons. Because the widow Slim, why, she wants to give a good burial to a good-for-nothing old drunk who up and fell right into the river, the unfortunate cast. Why not come along and give me a hand to dig the hole? Are you crazy? Well, I'm going back to bed and get me a little more shut-eye. Oh, oh. Douglas, come along, will you? And help me with the burying. Well, I sure do feel sorry for the poor departed. Amen. Rest in peace. Hallelujah. Then no one wants to join me, huh? Well, see if I care. I'll go alone. Ha! <laughs> Hey, come on, Sonny. Hide yourself down inside that box. I'm making snappy, too. We're late already. Ha! Ha! Oh, you darling. Oh, darling. Oh. oh. <laughs> Whoa. All right, now the danger's all over. Can you hear me, can you? You can come out now, Mayor. That is, if you wanna. If you don't mind my saying so, it's uncomfortable being dead. <laughs> Hurry up, and we got no time to lose. Howdy. Move on over. <laughs> 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 it's dangerous, Mr. Douglas. Uh, it's all so pitiful. This is terrible. We've got to separate these poor bastards. Where's Jim? Get him here at once. He went to help Barry Slim. Uh, why don't you call the mayor? Get him over here, then. Now you're talking. He's the one to call, not us. It's his problem, not ours. He's right. It's not our business. <laughs> Hurry, man. There's not much time. It's almost ready. The next part is difficult. I'll wait here, Jim. You go try to get the deputies we asked for from the governor. They ought to be able to get here in a couple of days. 
For the moment, you're the only one here to guard the cash. Don't worry. This one isn't dangerous. You wouldn't hurt anyone, would you? But look here, where are you going to put him? Is there some place you know we can take him? The hotel has a large cellar, sir. We've often used it as a dormitory. Let's take him over there, then. Playing with fire. It's a bad business. Hold your fire, idiots. That poor daughter and grave digger's gonna be very busy in a few days. Any uh, news, Douglas? Chavel started his old tricks again. So I transferred Jackson to the cellar here. Any luck in your ride? What do you think? Who the hell is that? I don't know. All I know is he sure ain't no victim of mine. I'd say he was a poor bank president, gents. You know what happens when you see too much money all at once. Heading for the saloon, Ben? I'm not drinking tonight. And not now, anyhow. Might need one later to wash down the fear. Expecting business? Not exactly. Perhaps, though, before the night's done with, we might have a dead corpse or two. I see. Well, good luck. <laughs> Everything okay up there? Quiet as your cemetery. Nice little place, huh? But I'm sure you wouldn't want to be there. Not for a minute. But I wouldn't mind a little sleep right now. Yeah. What about Corbett? You think he'll show up? Yeah, I'm sure he will. Everyone in town saw us come back here.
I've had enough. I only hope tomorrow I can get out of this miserable place here. Oh, you're cutting out early. It's not that early, and tomorrow I expect to be kind of busy. Give me a whiskey. And quit that awful playing. It's too hard on the nerves. Well, what's wrong if once in my life I pay for a drink? Go on, pour.
All right, Jed, take her in there. I'm sorry. I know it bothers you to kill anyone. What the Lord has given, only the Lord can take away. That even scorch him. Might as well turn in. The fire's under control, and O'Hara is buried in it. And the others? It's bad. That poor old Joe got bashed on the head real nasty. And they killed the deputy, and the Chevelle's disappeared, too. One thing I don't understand. Why Corbett hasn't made another raid on the town? Maybe he's thinking twice about that, because you're still around, my friend. <laughs> Hurry! Corbett and his men attack the James Ranch. They need help. Hey, wait for me. I'll go along with you. I'll give you a hand. Now, wait. Nope. You stay here. I'm going along. You would... Get up, mister. Come on. Pretty neat, huh? This little trick works all the time, huh, gringo? In Overdugo. This is the man who killed your brother, yes, sir. I am overjoyed to see you, amigo. That was nice work you did with those lunatics. A brave man. And quick as a snake he is. been gone long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you fast, Gringo. But make it fast. Hold it. You're a cool one, you are. Was mighty brainy using a funeral wagon to bring in the money. I just got to show you my gratitude for the favor you did. Let him down, Freddy. Put him on his horse. <laughs> Freddy will take you back to town. Let everyone get a look at a sample of what to expect if they don't come across with the money. And as for you, you got three hours to beat it out of Galveston, you hear me? 
right? And that's the last warning I'll give you. Leave the county, or you'll end up in Boot Hill. Now get out of here! Yeah! Gosh almighty, it's Jim! Be careful. Look what they've done to the poor kid. Come on, take him inside. Oh, to hell with it. I'll never get out of this two-bit place. That dang Corbett. Here you go, son. A whiskey and hurry. You'll be all right. Just don't fret, son. How do you feel? Uh, Better. What happened to you? Corbett gave me three hours to get out of Galveston. I'm sure that he's coming here to get the money. That's bad news, but what can we do? Do you want my opinion, then? <laughs> get the hell out of this damn place. I'm staying in Galveston, right here. Good for you. Good. I was worried there for a minute that you were going to leave me here all alone. Well, Mr. Mayor, the $5,000 offer is still open. You have my word on it. Good. That makes two of us, then. Two guns are better than one. Wait a minute. Count me in. Thanks. What about you, then, Bill? Of course. That's the only way I'll get any customers again. That's fine. I'll prepare a nice, cool spot in the town graveyard, especially for Corbett. <laughs> That's right. There you are. Good. And Corbett. Well, nice and comfy for you. You'll be right happy here. This is my business. It's my business too. Let him go. I said don't butt in. Hand me that gun. Come on. You should only kill to stay alive, boy. Preacher, you shouldn't have done that. You'll be sorry for it. Now just give me back my gun. The, uh, the job don't interest me no more. I'm leaving.
Where are you? Show yourself! Well, what's the matter? You scared or something? Come on out! Corbett! I want to talk to you! Don't shoot! My gun's empty! Throw your gun down! Give me the bottle. <laughs> well, you made a mess out of Verdugo. Just even the score. So now, you and the preachers had a bit of a fight. And you want even that score. <laughs> I must look like an idiot, huh? I'm not here to joke around. Uh, I had to mess up Verdugo. To make it look convincing. Otherwise, I couldn't have had a quarrel with a preacher. What's your point? They offered me $5,000 to prevent you from taking 200000 What's your offer? If I help you get your hands on the money. What do you figure? 100000 the whole town's waiting for you, fighting angry. Is it a deal? Mighty interesting. I have a proposal to make to you. You hold up the stagecoach from San Antonio. I want to be sure you're ready and willing to practice what you preach. And it's the surest way I know to compromise you in Galveston. Ted, give this to him just before the shooting begins. And if he gets any ideas, bury him quick. It's a real work of art. All right, now, I'll take care of your teeth tomorrow. You just come in Thanks. early in the morning and I'll fix you up. Right. Look who's here. You came back. You know, I figured you never left here for good. I just rode in to have a shave. Howdy, Billy. Howdy. Old man Scott wanted me to sort of drop by. <clears throat> Sit down over there. Keep quiet. <laughs> Stay where you are. Don't move. This is a holdup. Stay put. Get out of there. Now, give me your valuables and be quick about it. You're staying with me. Hey, Douglas! I know you're there! I'm listening. The girls, here with me. We're coming out, so don't do nothing foolish. Don't shoot or you'll hit the girl. We're coming out now. Throw down your gun. I never figured he'd join the bandits. Bad business. Well, I told you he wasn't a man to be trusted. You wouldn't listen. He took me by surprise, the dirty rat. Well, he made his choice. He'll burn in hell. 
Just look at this. $170 and two gold watches. It's peanuts, that's all. If we lose a man for every $100 we make, we ain't gonna have any men left pretty soon. Take that. Those guys in Galveston sure are trigger happy. They'll be waiting for us. You can bet on them. It'll be just about as easy as falling out of a tree. Yeah, what makes you think so? Well, here, let me show you. Now, here's the town. Here's the bank. Up here's the sheriff's office. And my plan is to send in four wagon loads of your men disguised as Mormons to take up position in front of the bank. Now, I'll ride in with three of your gang and attack the sheriff's office. That's where the preacher's gonna be waiting. We'll take him by surprise and get him out of there. And that practically puts a town in your pocket. All you have to do then is, is walk in and pick up your $200,000. Hmm, good plan. We move tomorrow morning. Jim, it's tomorrow morning. What's the plan? They're coming in dressed as Mormons, right after I surprise you. Good, we'll stay out of sight until they get inside the bank and then explode the dynamite. They'll be blown to bits. Uh, who will be watching the cash? The mayor. I'll make sure he knows what to expect. All right. But be careful how you shoot tomorrow. This morning, you almost didn't miss me. <laughs> uh, one more thing. Leave Corbett for me. I've got a score to settle with him. You planned it real well. It's perfect, huh? The charge of dynamite won't explode, of course. <laughs> Well, here's to your health, Corbett. Yeah. Don't worry about the mayor. I'll take care of him. Just get the money and run. What about Jim, huh? This time I want him dead. And what about those four idiots you're gonna have standing guard with you, partner? Don't worry about that. This gun has six bullets. And Moses led his people to the banks of the Jordan. And the evil ones were punished by the angel of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord is me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are you doing here anyway? Stay quiet. Leave me alone. Well, now, I just wanted to make sure the road was clear. I won't bother you no more. You better not. And don't involve me in any shooting. All I want to do is get out of this place. Well, go ahead. Go. 
but not tomorrow, or you'll wind up in a pine box. This town brought me bad luck from the moment I came here. You could be right. You better leave, but not tomorrow. Very pretty. Tomorrow, stay in bed till noon. You're used to that. Misty, you're looking for trouble. <clears throat> You ain't gonna kill me just as I got a whole lot of work to do, are you? I didn't know it was you, Ben. And you be careful. Only Douglas and I know you're not working with Corbett. Everyone else thinks you're a bandit. And if they see you, they'll shoot you dead. Okay, my old friend. Did you do what I told you to do? Of course. Here. Good work. Let's go. Tell our friends in San Antonio to say a prayer for us. When you return, you may find us all dead and buried. So long. Have a pleasant journey. <laughs> Good luck. set up just like you wanted. When they get here, we'll be ready for them. Good. I'll take a look around. Your suggestion and brought the chest of money here. Oh! <laughs> 
go back to bed. <laughs> One single blast and we killed them all, and the poor idiots didn't even know the money was safe right here. <laughs> yeah, the plan worked out fine, all right. What do we do now, Douglas? Nothing. You've served your purpose. But, but Douglas, I... I... Hey, what are you doing? Get him in a dead weight. <laughs> He raided a ranch in Tucson. Murdered my family. There were four of you did it. You, Jeff Logan, and the Butcher Brothers. Only you are still alive. No, you're wrong. There's another one alive yet. The man who really commanded the band. You're lying. You're lying. Believe me, I'm not. What's his name? Tell me before I kill you. Spit it out. Sure. Douglas, the Bible preacher and right, he'll rot in hell. He pulls a gun faster than me. That was very clever of you and Jim. When did you take the money out of the bank? Last night. It sure was smart, wasn't it? <laughs> Don't play games with me, Ben. Where'd you hide it all, huh? You got one minute to tell me where it is. I don't want to lose my temper, old man. You got about 30 seconds. <laughs> Ten seconds. Corbett is dead. And now it's your turn, Douglas. You rotten excuse for a preacher who murders without dirty in his hands. You wiped out a family. My family. And now you wipe out your whole band because you want the money. Just put that gun of yours where your mouth is. Stop praying, preacher.
May you rest in peace, Douglas. <laughs> Corbett is dead and so is Douglas. Douglas? Yeah. He was the leader of the band. to do. All them corpses. <laughs> Whiskey? Yeah, I can't bear the sight of water. So you're leaving? And you? My work's finished. No reason to stay. I'm not needed anymore. It's back to Arizona. Goodbye, Marjorie. Best of luck, Jim. <laughs>